Okay, here's a quick update and revision video on microfinance. Useful, I hope, if you're studying for your development economics papers in 2019. Microfinance or microcredit is basically any type of financial service provided to particularly low income groups. They might be unemployed or you know, any basically group or individual very low income who would otherwise have limited or no access at all to financial services. The genesis for the idea of microfinance came from Dr. Muhammad Yunus, the professor of economics at the University of Chittagong in Bangladesh and founder of the Grameen Bank. Famously, he lent $27 to a group of uh, 40 females who were making bamboo chairs but didn't have the money to buy the raw materials for their chairs. And they were in this classic cycle of, of debt and poverty amongst the local traders. Jonas actually lent these women his own money and uh, uh, the, the global phenomenon of microfinance has taken off since. If you look at access to basic financial services, a bank account, access to credit, ability to take out insurance. These are essential steps in, in financial inclusion. And across the world, there are deep, deep divides. This chart shows the percentage of women in the world in 2017 who have a bank account. 97% in Singapore, 20% in Ethiopia, less than 2% in the Yemen and Turkmenistan. So this is this access to financial insurance and bank accounts in many of the least developed countries, countries with the highest extreme poverty, clearly remains a structural problem, a big barrier to development. So what is microfinance? Microfinance is essentially a way of improving financial access and financial inclusion. So it could be microcredit, small scale loan, uh, particularly to poor households. It could be a, a platform for saving that you didn't have before. It could be microinsurance, for example, for farmers. They can insure against crop loss or uh, the loss of livestock in the event of a flood or a drought. And microfinance is also, also increasingly about remittance management, the ability to make transfer payments within countries through mobile phone solutions, but also across countries. Over 270 million people globally live and work overseas. Although many of the broad approaches to growth and development are essentially top-down, uh, microfinance is really a bottom-up or a grassroots approach to supporting enterprise and innovation. Lovely quote here from Yulia Tazava, co-founder of this of CNote. The end goal of microfinance is to have its users outgrow these smaller loans and become ready for a traditional bank loan. So what are the main advantages of microfinance. Let me pick out five for you that could be useful in an exam answer. The first is that microfinance in theory can help break the debt poverty cycle. It provides an alternative source of finance from very high interest rate urban money lenders or loan shops. The second potential advantage is that microcredit can help to smooth consumption of goods and services, particularly in countries where income flows from month to month are volatile. Countries that are heavily dependent, for example, on farming, where commodity prices are volatile, where there could be an external shock affecting production. Microcredit allows you to smooth your consumption when your income is volatile. The third key advantage is that it can help encourage help encourage enterprise, particularly amongst women. Key feature of microfinance has been the targeting of women, mainly on the grounds that compared to men, they tend to perform better as clients of microfinance institutions. And obviously, if you can lift the participation of women, both in terms of the labour market and also in terms of business startups, that can have very desirable long term development outcomes. Fourthly, it provides a platform for saving and insurance and uh, increasing saving. If you've been doing lots of revision, you'll be able to link that back to the importance of saving in the Howard Domar growth model. And crucially, microfinance oftentimes is a way of just providing that funding, that finance for social actions, social enterprises. It could be the most basic 
of infrastructure projects, such as a local community setting up a business to provide outdoor toilets or to provide service, irrigation services or crop management services for farming. Basic infrastructure can improve health outcomes. One of the great ways to advise a topic is just to take a take a, 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 a topic you're interested in, microfinance in this example, and just find some examples on social media, for example, Twitter, of, uh, of examples of where microfinance is working. And here we have some examples from left to right in India, in Ecuador and Uganda. Some good examples there, in particular emphasising uh, the microfinance model in support, supporting women entrepreneurs. According to this, microfinance lending, mostly to women in rural areas in India, has increased by 900% over the last six years, from $2 billion to $20 billion. So microfinance has potential power for good. However, it's obviously important to be able to evaluate your answers. This is going to be key at A-level. Microfinance um, is not a panacea. It doesn't cure every development problem. Some people think it's been a failure. One criticism is that microfinance is a market-based approach to development, uh, but there's been a tendency for the lenders to focus increasingly on their own profits rather than those people borrowing money. And there's a case for saying that microfinance may be generating um, borrowers who are taking out too many loans at a very high rate of interest. Is this the new kind of subprime lending which you'll be familiar with if you've studied the global financial crisis? The second point is that microfinance is not necessarily the most effective way of lifting savings. Sustainable savings come from having a job, a formal job, that pays reasonably well, and also from the government uh, being able to provide some form of welfare. Again, the evaluation is that microfinance has a part to play, but perhaps the focus should be on lifting output per worker, productivity, the yields in the farming sector and getting more people into formal employment to increase per capita incomes. And alternatives to microfinance include aid in the form of direct cash transfers, sometimes conditional on people meeting certain targets, such as immunisation or their kids going to school. So aid in the form of direct cash transfers might in the long term be more effective in reducing extreme poverty and therefore improving nutrition and uh, basic health and education. Most observers see microfinance as a useful financial service, an important part of the story, but not necessarily uh, a wholly transformative social economic intervention which changes the development path of a country. OK, so there we go. Arguments for and against. I hope you found this update on microfinance useful for your exams. Thank you.